It is Thursday, February 14th, 2013. This is the 404 Show on CNET. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Bridget Carey. I'm Richard Peterson. Happy Valentine's Day, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. That's why we have Bridget on the show, so it feels like we have some sort of romanticism still left. Romanticism in the air. She just got engaged. Beat me to it. And also going to (laughs) help us celebrate Valentine's Day, our buddy Uncle Henry is in the studio. Mr. Uncle Henry, how are you, man? What's up, Get buddy? Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, hello, Internet. How are you? Aloha. Uh, I lo- so you, he, uh, Henry was in Hawaii like how many years ago? It was like two years ago? No, it was this past June. This past June. All right, it's almost a year ago. And now whenever I, we hear from Henry, he still <laughs> says aloha. Like he's still there, which is pretty funny. Share a mic here. So, uh, so it's good to see you again, and thanks for Thank stopping you. by. Thank Always you, a pleasure. But you know why I'm here? Is uh, hey, we're celebrating Chinese New Year. That's yeah, right. And I are. have to give you your lucky money. Hell yeah! Oh, thank you, sir. Wait, all of us? That. Just yeah. me, right? Oh, Just yeah. the Chinaman <laughs> in the room. So, oh, thank <laughs> you very much. Wow. Is it, oh, thanks, man. Cool. Is there a certain thing I say? Yeah, you Thank say you. Happy New Year. Gracias. Do I say the Happy New Year? Like, in, how do you say Happy New Year in oh, Chinese? Oh, they're scratchers. No, I'm just kidding. How do you say Happy New Year in Chinese? Gong hei fa choi. You're welcome. See, that was pretty good, man. Oh, that was good. That was, that was good. good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, and Happy New Year to yeah. you Yeah, this is very cool. Well. Thank you so much. These are awesome. I always keep them and put small items of mine in there for safekeeping. <laughs> what? Like what? I, no one will look in here. No one will ever look in here and suspect <laughs> that there are drugs in here. Henry, I got a Chinese tongue twister for you in honor of the new year. Want to hear it? Uh, you want to hear it? It's only for Cantonese people, though. It's, it's uh, go, 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 go. What the what? hell is that? <laughs> Pretty good, right? What is do you that? get it? Henry, it's... do you understand what he just said? No. 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 Go, 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 go. It means brother, that brother, brother is taller than that brother. Can you speak Cantonese? Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be doing <laughs> Chinese <laughs> I told tongue twisters. Uh, 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 for the it's not really a tongue twister. Yeah. I can I do am, it. I'm very entertained here. Yeah. 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 We just slow it down. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Go, yeah, go, 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 Hey guys, go, remember go. the remember the time we did an episode of just Justin making noises like a damn bird or something like so that? So in Cantonese, there's a lot of different tones, and if you adjust the tones a little bit, they totally they make different words. Yeah. So go, go means that. Uh, go, go means brother. Go, go means taller than. Go, go means that. And yeah. then Gokol go means brother. So that it means that brother is taller than, than that, that brother. brother. And it all Ooh, depends on ha- on the emphasis you put yeah. on. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, good. today I learned something new. Fascinating hmm. your Chinese friends. I didn't realize Valentine's Day was going to be like this. Yeah, celebrating a lot of stuff. I'm this pretty year. excited about it yeah. though. Do you have any plans today? Uh, I got some plans, but it's a surprise, and I think she listens to this show, so I don't want to ruin it for myself. All right, Bridget, you're done. You're done. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Do How do you follow that up? I know. In fact, if anything, there's normally no pressure on the woman, but like, I think now I'm like, oh, I gotta do something to make you know, because he just proposed earlier in the week. So here's you know. what you gotta do. When I, I got engaged on Friday the 13th, February 13th in 09, mm-hmm. the next day I was like, hey, I'm done. Right? <laughs> what are you gonna do for me tomorrow? She took me out for a steak dinner. Nice. So that is I think you have to live keeper. up to that, yeah. Miss. I Carrie. like that idea. I yeah. like that idea. So and uh, and and Richard, um, just sit at home and cry myself to sleep. Okay, just cry your yeah. tears into a bucket of ice cream. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna happen. At least and you got we, some money though. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Spend that money. So what does a retired do 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 on Valentine's Day? Nothing. 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 Living the dream, man. Been Living married. the dream. Oh, the thrill's gone. Yeah, it's I, I can understand where you're going with yeah. that. Spending Valentine's Day with us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> I <laughs> the fact you're here. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. All right, excellent. I'm very happy. Everyone seems to be in a great mood today, so we'll have a great show. That's how you know. We got so many responses on Twitter about what would you want in a uh, from a movie. Uh, what kind of prop would you want from a movie? We'll get to that on the show today as well. And we'll watch a trailer about a new movie about Google. Yeah. Starring Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn. Have they ever been in a movie together? I don't think so. <laughs> no, they haven't. Uh, you know what? You want to get to that right now and, and talk about it and see what it's all about? Uh, yeah. We all can right. watch the trailer for it. Can you give me a little uh, briefing on what, on what we're going to see? Because I had never even heard about this movie. Right. So uh, this is you know a, a movie starring Vince Vaughn. Uh, uh, and John Goodman actually is in it along Love with John Owen Wilson. Goodman. Yeah, so they're starring two. Dude, he was at Toy Fair. I John got to Good- see him. Oh, really? Yeah, because no he was part of promoting the new Disney Monsters uh, movie, oh, right. which, which is which is in the video games that's coming out. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's awesome. And what's this called? 
Uh, this one is called The Internship, and it's about those two getting an internship at Google, mm -hmm. but they're, you know, a little bit older, and they have to go back into the workforce and start fresh, so this is kind of like a competition to see if they can outsmart the smart kids. So instead of wedding crashing, they're job crashing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they don't really stray too far away from the yeah. old road map there. It's kind of the same story as they always do. You can probably expect... College crashing, wedding yeah. crashing, job crashing. Yeah. <laughs> probably All right. expect Owen Wilson to over-enunciate every syllable. And just sort of smile and grinning like an idiot the right. entire movie. Yeah. Uh, all right, anyway, here's a trailer we'll watch and listen to. It's called The Internship. I defy you to crush this course and not get psyched out of your mind. I'm gonna pop some bags. Only got twenty dollars in my pocket. The Chrono Shock 13. They didn't tell you, did they? Your company is closed. You closed the company? Everything's computerized now. <laughs> People have a deep mistrust of machines. Have you seen Terminator? Yep. Or two? Mm -hmm. Or three? Or four? All of us. <laughs> Vic, I got it. Google. You got us a job at Google? Not a job job. It's an interview for an internship that could lead to a job. Uh, Nick, this might be the last chance that we got. No, no, come in here. You got to come in closer. Yeah. You won't be able to no, see us. See, see how small the webcam is? No, kitchen, kitchen. Uh, we can see you guys. Okay, good. Great. You got us? Hi, my name is Billy. We can hear you fine as well. <laughs> oh, great. Welcome to Google. This will not be your average internship. We're looking at some sort of mental hunger games against a bunch of genius kids for just like a handful of jobs. That's a Sharpie, by the way, genius. That's my fault. <laughs> I'm Lyle, one of the team managers. Pound me. Oh, normally just putting the, the fist out without the words is all that's necessary. Come on, bro. <laughs> fist me. Get up in there. Yeah, that's definitely not right. <laughs> Your interns? Yeah. Shout out. Deal with it. You're so old, though. I thought you were important. Sometimes the long shots pay off the biggest. Our team's a joke. You guys got to start believing. This reminds me of a little girl from a steel town who had the dream to dance. She had to strip down to nothing. She had to sit in that chair and arch her back, and she reached up and pulled the chain to nowhere and doused herself with water. Flash dance? You're talking about the movie from the 80s. Yeah, you're damn right I am. Oh, boy. <laughs> The red paddle indicates no, green paddle, yes. Having a beer with your boss. If you want to grab a cold one with me, you let me know. I will not be grabbing a cold one with you. You get high? <laughs> your job, find the bug. One of the two of you guys right now go and find the programmer. His name is Charles Xavier. He's a professor at Stanford. <laughs> He's in a wheelchair. Got it, Stanford wheelchair. Yes. Charles Xavier? <laughs> Professor Xavier, we know that it's you. You <laughs> found me out. Cyclops, Rogue, we're all here. <laughs> now, I want to share some of my wisdom with you. Uh... <laughs> Professor Xavier's a total... <laughs> okay, besides that end, which was relatively funny. That's pretty good. I don't know. But I'm surprised to see Google having such a big... You know, there's probably in a, cameos in, a in there film too. Film like that, yeah. though, right? It seems sort of weird. Well, they actually shot on the campus in Mountain View. There is an <gasps> article in the Sun that talks about hey. how they were approved for that. So they've been shooting a lot of the scenes there on campus. Facebook's got a movie. They want to get on the action I too. Oh, you're, I guess you're, you're you're right. Obviously, they had to be compensated in some capacity for yeah. it too, as well. Very interesting. I don't know. We'll all watch it. Yeah, <laughs> will we? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do a live blog from that. the from the premiere. I feel like I need a cardigan. Uh, Pair of glasses I'll have to a meetup, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right on. Um, all right, we have a few other things going on in the rundown today. Yeah, I kinda just, can we just keep watching trailers? You want to yeah. just do that? You just like a mystery trailers? science theater for trailers? I love that. All show. I will right. get the popcorn. What else we got, dude? Let's talk more about Valentine's Day. So yeah. it sounds like we all uh, have. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Let's move on to the fax machines here. <laughs> we have another story about that. But, uh, okay, really quick, Richard, we'll talk about Valentine's okay. Day plans. We all kind of have loose Valentine's Day plans, but if you don't have anything to do and someone may be expecting a nice dinner. Maybe you wait to the last minute. Maybe you wait to the last minute. There's a restaurant in New York called Casa Nonia. It's uh, uh, or Nona. It's an Italian restaurant. They're offering a way to fake a homemade dinner. For you and your sweetheart. It's kind of weird, right? Uh, so, look, check this out. This is the ultimate guide to faking it. This is a $500 prefix take home meal that you can buy. $500 take home meal. Yeah, that you can wow. buy. And it's, uh, it's like it's a luxury restaurant, so it's a 
pretty nice cuisine. They clearly don't put that five hundred dollars into their web design. But continue. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Use the profits for that. Uh, so the deal here is that they do all the work. You just select uh, one pasta, two entrees, two sides. Uh, here, switch back to this. There's a couple of photos here. This is the most interesting part of it, though, is that for the five hundred dollars, they actually provide you with a pre-dirtied apron. And a set of pre dirty no. dish and cookware that for you to so really weird. prove and fake this for uh, for the effect at home. They basically just stole the idea from Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. You're 100 percent right. <laughs> exactly. That's, well, well done, Bridget. I like that. New uh, gems. Th- it, this certainly strange. Yeah, there's I like mean, a 10-step program here where they tell you to open up the oven a little bit so that the fumes waft out to give a better effect. Yeah, they, they give you uh, wine that pairs perfectly with the meal that you've chosen. So you so you start off your yeah. Valentine's Day as a deceitful bastard. Right, exactly. <laughs> what, and what else is love about right. I mean, besides lying to your significant other? Right. It almost seems like baking the actual uh, cooking process yeah. is almost as much work as actually just getting down and dirty and cooking yourself. Well, you got to not forget to throw away all the bags and There's going to be a lot of plastic with in here. Yeah. You really have to cover your tracks. It comes with a colander, a used colander with bits of vegetable that, stuck onto it. A colander is a strainer, is right? So yes. For you to have cleaned your vegetables. All right, I'm going to have to say as... As a female, I think it's adorable when something's not perfect. If it's perfect, right. okay, I'm. If, if you're already on a date, you know, and the fact that you're doing it from scratch, right. I don't need perfection, you know, right. just to just, just show that you care. And this is obviously people who are, like, so paranoid. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to cook, you know. And what kind of significant other would believe this? Like, well, oh, honey, you've never, you've never cooked, cooked before. before. Yeah. I've never. Yeah, yeah, you put together the most glorious and luxurious <laughs> yeah. dinner we've ever had. Yeah, and bought cool. new plates, bowls, glassware, and cutlery for yeah. it, too. And and really what's this on up. the credit card bill? $500 yeah. to Casanona's. <laughs> hmm. I guess it would be good for a first date or if you just started dating and you want to impress them. Yeah, right. I guess. Like but, Bridget but, says, but, you but might it costs well... less to go out to a nice steak yeah. dinner. Right. Yeah. right. I mean, you could spend $200 and have an unbelievable dinner as opposed to, you know, more than twice that. This also wouldn't work in a New York studio apartment, too. <laughs> that has <laughs> a half refrigerator. No one would buy it. Yeah, a boilerplate instead of an oven. That wouldn't yeah. really work. Anyway... It's too late if you even want to jump on this. No, these, it's not. These had to be made could, five days in advance. But they do offer a less expensive one without the pre-dirty dishes, and you can order three hours in advance. <laughs> nice. But I need the dishes. But I need <laughs> yeah. the... That's really what sells the whole thing. No, yeah. what, what sells romance is not having a dirty apartment, boys. Mm. <laughs> that's just never going to happen. This is I'm the reason sorry. you're on the show. These are good tips. <laughs> I don't know. When You obviously have been on... Dates before yes. in, your, in your life. What what was like? What did you ever have like a bad Valentine's Day experience? Mm, that's interesting. Because uh, I there's one that I just simply cannot even talk about with what? me personally. I just won't do it. I know I brought it up and I teased everyone with yeah. emotion. It was so disastrous. I can't. It, oh just bringing gosh. it back is going to make me sweat. What was his name? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Have you had anything that would you you? I've had shattered path. I've had nothing on Valentine's Day that yeah. was terrible because I really don't I never really had Valentine's Day dates. Mm-hmm. Right. Um but I've had I've had awful dates that you're like, "Really is this happening?" and they make for great stories. Sure. But um like uh almost throwing up once on what? a date. Oh, yeah. No. How did <laughs> you that almost threw up or he almost? No, he he almost I almost threw up because of his stupid planning. Uh basically thought it was romantic oh to um hey Let's go bike riding <laughs> on a hot Memorial Day weekend in Florida. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's okay. Okay, um, sure. The bike ride was for two miles, and I told him I don't like bike rides. So first of all, like, we're yeah. on the middle of, like, a busy street, and, like, so I'm worried about balancing on a bike that isn't my own, uh-huh. and, and, and I'm tired and I'm worn out. And we get to this halfway point, which I thought was, like, way beyond the finish line. Uh-huh. And, oh, by the way, did I mention that he didn't give us water? No. We were First off, I felt obligated to go because it was, like, a double date with, like, two of his other friends. He stops at a 7-Eleven and gets slushies for everyone and spikes them with rum. So, <laughs> so, so, so the Wait a only... Minute. He no- didn't tell you there was rum in there? Until we start taking off, I'm like, wow. Like, By the way, you're drunk. <laughs> Which is actually illegal because yeah. you can't drink and bike ride. And I'm going, Jesus, this is the only nourishment I have. I'm right. like sweating. I'm tired. So he stops at this uh, wooden boardwalkish place along a beach. 
I'm thinking we're done. He's telling me this is a halfway point to get to a bar. By wow. the way, that is the goal, to get to a bar. Yeah, because you guys haven't been drinking or anything. And and all of a sudden, I get off. And when you work out your legs often um, or, or, or a lot, you'll... People at the gym, you get nauseous. Notice, it, it yeah. actually affects your stomach, yeah. and and you get really nauseous. I always, whenever I get home from hockey, I puke. <laughs> yes, that's but, how it works. So, so I'm getting off the bike, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm gonna vomit from all these people. <laughs> oh my god! I'm on a boardwalk, so there's no place like there. There's a how do you call it? Like like a handrail that goes up to your neck. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's not. It's like a bridge and a boardwalk, so it can't. I can't even go off to the side in the bushes. There oh is a th there's a handrail that goes up to your shoulders, so I would have to like get myself over this. Oh my! I God. ended up calming myself down, but he's like, "Isn't this romantic, baby?" I, I just my, my words are I have to throw up now. Oh <laughs> wow! And I, so that is romantic. yeah, that is so, super. That's <laughs> so touching. Yeah. I, know. I bet it played out so differently in his head yeah. too when he was planning it out. He's like, "Oh, it's just gonna be a little loose. Yeah. And <laughs> we'll go and enjoy this romantic bike ride yeah. together." Stupidity isn't Poor romantic. No. Yeah. yeah. No, that's such yeah. a shame. Yeah. Wow. There was a couple other instances like that so quickly ended that yeah, yeah. and congratulations on your marriage too about that. <laughs> <laughs> same guy this entire time right? i don't know if dude. you get a second chance after a story nah, like that yeah. that's awful that's pretty gnarly i know we said we're not, i know we said we're not going to talk anymore about uh valentine's day stuff right but we will right now there's one more story that i want to talk about and uh if you really want to said something creepy to a potential love mate, you could do so with this new app, and I can't wait to hear what Bridget has to say about it. All right, it. what's it called? Um, it's called Rebeat by a company called Rebtel. All right, so this is a smartphone app for iPhones and Androids, and what this does is it basically records your heartbeat that you can then send to a partner. What? Right, so you have two options on how to record it. You can either take your pulse as you hold your finger over the camera lens, which I'm not even sure how the iPhone has the capacity to do that. It's, well, I'll it's, tell you how it's doing it. I was going to say, it's got to be through microphone and not... Well, the, that's the other no. way that you could do is that yeah, you can tap the on the microphone in conjunction with your own heartbeat, I'm assuming, as you take it on your wrist it's or just you just accurate. feel your heartbeat. Okay, yeah, it can't be And accurate. then you tap it accordingly. Interesting. So that's a less accurate way. Um, light sensors on the iPhone um, <laughs> are very... Um, temperamental and also oh. not accurate unless you have a special uh, like extra piece you actually connect. I've seen health monitors do right. this in a serious way where you have a covered plastic piece you can stick your finger in uh -huh. and the light will measure how much it, it it's looking at your pulse uh -huh. by by detecting if like the light is a certain way because it's looking at your finger. How so do it's I sort describe of seeing this? Kind of like, kind of like seeing how much blood it can is is reflecting at a point. Oh, okay. And it's just judging. Okay, I sense a change in color every like so slight every so right. often, and that's what it's probably doing. But you know but, what's but, I mean, you to, to do it right, you really need an extra attachment to like that's right. medical. And I, uh, I, okay. Aside from the fact, I hope it's free because you better not pay for something that's not accurate. I think it's cute. You think it's, <laughs> you think it's you think, cute? Really? I, to send someone uh, the sound of your heartbeat? Yeah, what's the point? Yeah, what's the freaking point, right? Well, you know, after you record it, you can either send a message along with it, or there are canned messages that you could send that My I think are, make it even you. creepier. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, they're super cliche. Um, but it's yeah, creepy one is don't my know heartbeat the for you. <laughs> <laughs> the other is wishing I was there, and then the other is I'm just a heartbeat away, which is like womp, look behind womp, you. <laughs> you can do that. I, and then there's I the like, I want to beat you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gems, gems. <laughs> okay, I can't gems. stop that. That's really gems, good. you uh, crazy gems. I would be like, hey, honey, I'm feeling kind of funny. Can you listen to this? <laughs> yeah, I'm dying. <laughs> I, don't, I, I have no heartbeat. Am I having a heart attack? Yeah, yeah, I, I got arrhythmia for you. <laughs> that's that's really Really, <laughs> that's strange. Yeah. For sure. Well, have you have you heard about the pair app, which is now called Couple? But, no, um, no, no. Pair, you know, if you want to get techie term about it, it's a hyper uh, uh, local social network. Only two people will, uh -huh. will use it at a time on this app, and instead of just texting back and forth, the app the app will let you do things like send funny drawings to each other, sync your calendars, sync your shopping lists, mm -hmm. and also thumb kiss, where you stick your thumb. On the screen, and the other person's phone will say, "Hey, they're thumb kissing right now." And when you do it too, 
Oh. Both your phones will vibrate. That's oh. kind of. I mean, that's kind of. Cool. I just threw up in my that's mouth. Cool. <laughs> right? You've done this before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would never admit that. That's so uh, cute. Well, yeah. Well. well. <laughs> She's like, yeah. Well. Uh. <laughs> I'm just saying. I think it's cute to have you unique ways of thinking about you, but it's only good for a one-time. You know, yeah. laugh. It's you don't not... need an app to do that. Too, you can just record a voice memo of you <laughs> kissing your phone and then yeah. send that to them. Exactly. Too. It's all about being creative. If you need an app to like be that creative, uh, I hope it's free. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> you and I should start a romance show on oh, scene. Yeah. I <laughs> think we should. <laughs> SLK had a great comment to Richard's uh, comment about the app. How uh, <laughs> he's, I beat you. He said, "What is this? A Chris Brown app?" <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> Not bad, SLK. So topical. So topical. Not bad at all. <laughs> All right, no more Valentine's Day. No, talk. we're done with that. Yes, Chance. yes. Finally. Finally. One Valentine's Day comment so more on. I, Come on, Valentine's Day is just a miserable thing altogether. Um, we asked people yesterday and uh, a couple days before to tweet us to write in to call in about what props they would want if they could have anything from any movie ever. Let's read a few. We had tons of at replies on Twitter. Ben Tate writes in and says, "On the subject of must-have movie items, I made a list of some things I would like to have." Mm -hmm. Uh, he wants um, R2-D2 from Star Wars. That's a tall a order. Uh, from Indiana Jones, he wants that leather whip, the hat, and the leather jacket. You get that mm -hmm. at Disney, just you so can, you know. I'm sure you could. I want just, like, the the, the idol he steals from in Raiders. Mm -hmm. I've seen that in Bank Form. I would love that. <laughs> in Bank Form? <laughs> like, like a little like coin a bank. Yeah. Nice. Uh, he also wants the rug from the Big Lebowski, because <laughs> I guess it tied the room together. Yeah. Uh, an animatronic-controlled uh, gizmo from Gremlins. Proton pack from Ghostbusters, the flux capacitor so from greedy. obviously the Back to the Future. That, then they sell that to about two hundred bucks. Mm. Yes, they do. He wants the T eight hundred endoskeleton from Terminator, and then he wants Mal's pistol from Firefly slash Serenity. Mm. Wow! So we'll get on those right away. If you want to <laughs> give us your shipping address, we'll get those out to you. You know, I can split. You know what prop I've been seeing a lot on the street, which is kind of cool, but I think should be left in your house maybe, is the jacket from Drive. Ryan Gosling's white jacket. With the, uh, have you seen this with the, like yeah. the scorpion on yep. the back? It's pretty badass it's like for the movie. It's like a jacket, yeah. In reality, it's Or if it's, it's on cheesy. Ryan Gosling's yeah. back. I, right. But I, putting it on doesn't make you as attractive <laughs> as the actor. That's the problem. So it's always these like, kind of shrimpy looking dudes, but with a huge jacket on. I it's saw, weird. I saw a pretty skinny dude with a Mass Effect jacket. Yeah. Like, like the, the, the N7? The, right, the N7 logo. And uh, is reading reading a paper book. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. Like, like that, that, oh, that I guess awesome. Commander no. Shepard's back into analog yeah. paper now. <laughs> yeah. um, this is all from Twitter. Uh, at Juan, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Dude, that's your handle. Uh, he says, <laughs> uh, I want the laser gun from Johnny Five. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know what that is. I, I can't re recall any of that. Uh, Scott says, I would take the assault rifle from the end of Scarface. Dude, not you cool. Can, you can get one of those. You can get one Just of those right now. Seriously. Just go to a gun show. Um, Michael says, I would have the blaster that Han Solo shoots Greedo with. I mean, gun... Why does everyone want guns, man? Have you been to the internet movie gun database? It's like IMDB with, with a G instead of yeah, a D. That's, that's really... Funny. I think the best gun is the RoboCop gun. Yeah, right? that, for sure. That huge one. Uh, Zombie Jesus says he wants Mark Wahlberg's prosthetic penis from the final scene of Boogie Nights. I think because we talked about that a little earlier. Chris says he wants Ecto-5 from Ghostbusters. I guess that's the car. Ecto-1, I yeah. thought it was called. Um, Max says he wants the 1968 Mustang GT390 from Built, from Bullet. I don't know what that is. Oh, yeah, the Angelina is? Jolie movie. Isn't that Gone in 60 oh, Seconds? No, wait, wasn't Bullet, maybe I'm thinking of it wrong, where like no, I'm thinking of the no, wrong movie. Wanted. I'm thinking of Wanted. <laughs> I was just like, the bullet from the Yeah, movie. the curvy. This is pretty bullet. cool. Brandon says he wants Doc Holliday's pistol from Tombstone. Oh. I get People just want guns. Yeah, people oh. are very violent. Really well, if you ever go guns. to a Ren Fair, it's pretty much the most popular <laughs> booth is like all the swords and the guns and the Klingon Here's a great one. Things. Here's a great one. Joe says he wants the Rocketeer helmet and jetpack. Oh, that is cool. That is, I oh, feel like I saw I, that. I, I have seen it. I have seen the helmet. <laughs> You've uh, seen it in person? Yeah, it was it was so expensive, and I thought maybe I just don't need it. Um, but it was at a comic book bookshop, um, and that's probably one of my favorite mo movies. I have a statue mm -hmm. um, right now in my bookcase, yeah. so that's that's gonna have to do. Yeah. <laughs> so people but, people either want cars or guns, and in one case, a helmet from Rocketeer. Which have you seen the Rocketeer? Is an amazing. Yeah, movie. It really is very very good, and it kind of holds up even though it looks kind of funny now. Um, and then Greg says he wants the uh, Aston Martin DB5 from Goldfinger. 
which was uh, 007. Okay. Back in the day. Yeah. Did any of you watch Fringe? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then you, I guess. Why? You could talk about it, though. Eh, I wouldn't mind. Well, now the show's over, they have a lot of this, um, of, um, I like don't know. prop giveaways yeah, there's a lot. I, I, I would love to probably hunt down some of the stuff, you know. I just, it's been on my mind. That's I, all. I, I that, that is you. it. I hear you. <laughs> um, all right. And then finally, we had uh, one more story that we'd like to get to. <laughs> do you want to talk about this story? I, do. I feel like it would kill the momentum of the good show we're already having. No, I like this because this, <laughs> this is funny to me. Did you read the story? I did. Oh, okay, yeah. Go ahead then. I want to hear you talk about this because I always do. Cause, so we're talking about uh, uh, Japanese technology. Of course. And, uh, you know, we always seem to be sort of trailing them behind in, in, yeah. in, in their innovations. They live in the future. They kind of live, like, uh, I want to say, if you really were to come down with a number, they're probably like 18 to 25 years in the future compared to where we are. Usually. Usually. Uh, they're renowned for their robots and their bullet trains. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yeah. Robots. Thank you. And their bullet trains. People have been writing in about that. They're really starting to like that. Even Jim Romanesco wrote me a note about how he's only saying robots. <laughs> really? Yeah. Awesome. Um, it remains a firmly wedded to pre-internet technology, but the fax machine mm. that most other developed countries have seemingly abandoned yeah. uh, is still sort of having a place Ooh. in Japanese technology and culture. Ooh, just listening to you talk about fax machines. It gets you off, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> Last year alone, Sweating. Japanese households, and this is from the Times, this yeah. is in fiction, Japanese households bought 1.7 million mm -hmm. of the old-style fax machines, which print documents on slick, glossy paper spooled in the back. I really like this story. Oh, oh with the little, like, holes on the side? Yeah, yeah, like oh. the dominatrix-style paper. Oh, wow. Now, contrarily, in the United States, the device has become such an ancient artifact mm -hmm. That the Smithsonian is adding two machines to its collection right. just to preserve their memory. Right. Yet alone in Japan, almost two million of them have been... Now, the only thing that I can uh, rationalize is mm. that the Japanese people have somehow been able to work out in their own vocal language mm -hmm. to be able to speak to these machines. And that's why they're, <laughs> and they're, and they're, they develop their own language in a series almost the way whales communicate. Right. That they've been able to talk to fax machines. But it's apparently close. And, 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 they, and they can also close. dial up to AOL right. just by yeah, getting exactly. to a microphone. Yeah. And connect directly to the internet <laughs> yeah. with their brain. Very close. This advanced species known as the Japanese people. To understand <laughs> the popularity of fax machines in Japan, you got to understand some of the cultural traditions. To really understand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is a half-baked <laughs> half yeah. reference. I'm picking that up. Right on. Um, so, but, so in Japan, a lot of the business is confirmed using things called honko stamps. And uh, they have this in China. I don't know what the Chinese word for it is, but they ha also have it in Korea as well. So it's popular in Asian countries. But it's literally a stamp, an ink stamp, that you put onto a piece of paper that shows your seal of approval. Gotcha. And they have it for individuals. They have it for corporations and various businesses around the country. But that's something that can't be plagiarized, right? Because you have a special it's ink. It's almost like a notary. And it's sort hand of cut thing. for you. Yeah. So it's a no. Yeah, it's like a personal notary. Exactly. Yeah. And so this is how business gets done, and a lot of Japanese citizens have recently expressed their uh, fear of their personal information being stolen sure. in light of a lot of stories coming out. We hear about them almost every week here. Mm -hmm. And so to safeguard their personal information, there a lot of businesses rely on a paper trail and these honko stamps to confirm their authenticity. And so that's why a lot of fax machines still exist. That and also um, until the 80s, they um, Japanese computers couldn't figure out the language, because a lot of it relies on symbols, obviously, mm -hmm. like uh, kanji symbols that don't exist. You can't just write those out onto a keyboard to type out. So that's why in fax machines, they like the handwritten element of it because it's, it's, it's faster and it's more authentic. And it's kind of charming, too, to get a handwritten letter, I, but not have to wait for the postal service to deliver it. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Even when I asked my dad about maybe when I was younger, I'd be like, Dad, what's the, the biggest technological achievement in your lifetime? Yeah. He wouldn't even think twice. It would be fax machines. Yeah. And I'd just be like, no, man. Wrong. <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> uh, but no, from the article, Japan has this Galapagos effect of holding on some things they're comfortable with. Yeah. Um, and, you know, while elsewhere in the world the fax has gone the way of the dodo, mm -hmm. in Japan it's still thriving because of this one specific example. Right. Henry, it's funny. Before the show started, Henry and I were talking about the village where our family's from. Actually, our families grew <laughs> up in the in adjacent villages. And they only use fax machines. And they, <laughs> they met using a fax. No, um, you were telling us about how uh, a lot of the phones... 
are actually cell phones in those villages because uh, because landlines are a little too expensive. Well, landlines are too expensive to put in. It's cheaper to put up cell towers. That's so, crazy. So villages where you you know farms, you think. You know, they're, they're carrying around cell phones. Yeah. It's weird. It's very weird, yeah. They just skipped over several decades of yeah. technology, went straight to cell phones. But even if you look at popular culture from the 80s and 90s, even to the late 90s, mm-hmm. you know, uh, fax machines were considered like an elite sort of form of communication. Yeah. You know, like uh, you would have like a guy, a Wall Street guy, be like, and if you need to reach me, fax me. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. So yeah. Was, they were very big in the 80s. Very strange. Yeah, this is weird, too. Uh, even the Yakuza crime syndicate in Japan actually uses fax machines. In the article, it talks about how uh, they use fax machines to send notifications of expulsions from the clan. Wow. Literally a, read my fax, you're fired <laughs> yeah. from Japan. From the mob in yes. Japan. Yes. That's exactly what it comes yes. from. Yes. That's crazy. And in Back to the Future, it is a Japanese it's dude. It's Mr. Fujitsu-san. <laughs> is, it? is that who That's it what is? his name yeah. is. Read my He's fax. He's like, oh, konnichiwa. They actually wow. fire people <laughs> using fax machines. That is cool, right? That is If that's cool. not life imitating art, I don't know what is i guess back to the future got one thing wrong though (laughs) we won't be using fax machines as much at least not in our closets yeah at least not yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) why do you need a fax coming out of your closet (laughs) there was one everywhere there was one everywhere it made no sense we also don't need 30 13 inch television screens to show us it's all about the double time man yeah that's catching on that is catching on in waves you see oh i can't wait yes all right, let us know about your fax machine tales. I'd like to hear that as well. Yes. I used to always go to my dad's office and just play with his fax machine. Yeah. And be like, oh, I'm in the future now. Look at me. You know what we should do? I have a surplus of printer, multifunction printers with fax machines in the office. We should set one up here, give out our fax number, and we Love can read it. off faxes on the show. Love it. That is a great Love idea. It. Do that. Love it. Can we, can we get the number now or no? Oh, well, we have to set the number. I don't know what it is. I don't even know if there's a telephone line. Wait, we here. need to find, what do you call it? A land yeah, jack? Yeah, land What yeah. are those called? The Auxiliary jack? plug? Oh, it's like a jack phone. Phone. Telephone jack. We need, you know, magic wire. <laughs> Is that the connection type? That's a great idea, though. We're going to do it. You watch us. 866-404-CNET. That's the voicemail, not, not the fax number. Yeah. We'll get you the fax number, too. I think we'll just make it like fax 404. We need Jamie like to that. record a new jingle for us. Fax yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Or you can email us, the 404 at CNET.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. We're back here tomorrow on Friday. And we'll also be announcing a few guests for next week tomorrow. So there's a lot to look forward to with that. Thank you so much, Mr. Uncle Henry, for being here. Yeah. Happy New Year to you, sir. All right, Bridget Carey, always a pleasure. We get double Bridget this week because every week you get engaged, you're on the show <laughs> twice. Yes. All right, we like that. And thanks to Richard for coming you're back welcome. and saving us from the disaster that was Mark Lassay. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. It was bad, wasn't it? Was it was terrible. Sure it was. <laughs> We're back here tomorrow. We'll see you guys then. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Bridget Carey. I'm Richard Peterson. It's the 404 Show. High tech, low brow. Have a great Thursday. Finishing up the week tomorrow. We'll see you guys.